Dimitri. Yes, brother. Last one, man. Welcome to the Construction Life Podcast. Man, we just like, we've been, like, this has been a hugely informative series of shows that hopefully are going to help a lot of people, men and women, young and old. Yep. The five series, we got to call it. The five uh, fist punch. No, there's four. We've done, it? It's four shows, but we'll, we'll continue doing more shows yeah, too. Yeah, 100%. But I mean, it's just been really, really interesting that, you know, we've touched upon so much coaching, food, injuries. You years know what I mean? of, of practice into a podcast. That's what, well, you've got all three decades of experience, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and but that, if anyone listening has questions and they want to want us to know, send us a, a DM or send us a message, and yeah. we'll definitely log it down and put it for the next one. Send it to me. I'm just going to redirect it to Dimitri or get right. a hold of him. What's the information again? At Dimitri Giancoulis on Instagram and Facebook as well. Dimitri Giancoulis. If you want to visit my YouTube channel, Dimitri Giancoulis, subscribe. You'll get a bunch of good. Uh, educational videos as well you'll get these shows on there too as well yeah, as man. soon as they're all ready to go so this last one we're going to talk about men and women we're going to talk about men and women and how their bodies change i guess as a result of your lifestyle changes your physical health changes how everything kind of just happens there is a cause and effect and i think like you've mentioned in previous shows a good chunk of this fair to say 80 percent of this is actually preventable by choices of what 100%. how you eat 100 percent, 100 percent. unless it's gene like genetic speaking and you've got some condition or something that's different but yeah, unless you have a, a growth hormone yes. abnormality you have some type of uh, genetic effect but typically 80 percent could be fixed it's how you're eating how you're not lifestyle. exercising how you're whatever all that kind of crap so we want to begin with this just to kind of give us or give the listeners and the viewers uh, a snapshot into men and women yep what happens over the ages right you like this with the uh I, I told you too this love is it. i love it dude it's different not a lot of people are doing it <laughs> so the listeners are getting the you got to watch these shows and sound you got to start and watching the yeah. of it. so so where do you want to begin now you want to talk so about metabolic syndrome is i think the first precursor that affects males um with low testosterone or it starts the process you can be born with low testosterone and have a growth hormone defect um some people like you know tony robbins one of the most popular people in the whole world he was born with an issue where his growth hormone level was more than normal that's why he's a tall he's tall he's huge his hands man. are massive his yeah. chin is huge um and there's people that are born sometimes with dwarfism or areas where they um, for some reason they had an injury when they're born and they give them testosterone supplements or enhancing growth hormone um, uh, supplements to help them out. But typically, the short of the story is we're all going to age. We're all going to eventually get weaker. We're all going to get softer and we're all going to die. You can't hide that. But when you're, you got to look at life. When you're from zero to 10, you're not really knowing nothing. You're just living, you're experiencing, you're absorbing. From 10 to 20, those are important years, man, because your body's going through getting out of being a child. You're going through puberty. Your body is morphing now into a male and a woman. Your body's changing. Your pituitary gland's on fire. Your testosterone level is producing. Your body's producing. Little boys go through puberty. Their voice changes. They get Adam's apple hair and so forth. So at 20 still, like, you're pretty healthy. I, I don't really see a lot of you do see some teenagers that are overeating now, but typically up till 20. From 20 to 30, that's a massive make it or break it. And every time I meet people in their 40s and 50s and 60s that are in the down cycle of life, they're not happy, no energy, overweight, I always go back to, hey man, when you're 18, and when I'm trying to tell people about their body type, my first question is, when you're 18 to 25, could you eat whatever you wanted and never have a problem? Could you always go up and down the scale and gain, like I lose some, I gain some? Or were you yeah. always stuck and not able to lose weight? And the minute they can answer me were, oh, I could eat whatever I want, man, and even up to my 30s, boom, they're ectomorphic. If the person was always able to gain, lose weight very quickly, they bulk up quickly, they lose weight, they're a mesomorphic body type, the second of the three somatotypes. And then if they say, hey, man, you know, I've struggled all my life with weight, it's always been a challenge, they're endomorphic. So now from that period of time, lifestyle habits kick in and will form what happens for both male and female later on because we're a hormonal species. So you look at inactivity, you look at 
overconsumption of food. I'm not talking bad food, just overconsumption in general. You're looking at stresses that you don't take care of, sleep you don't take care of, overworking, and then you have the compounding effect, which means now the poor eating is screwing up your metabolism, the metabolism is being screwed up, so you're not happy, you're not happy, you're overworked, trying to make money to become happy, to get that freedom, you're not sleeping, you're not recovering, you're waking up tired, the whole function goes on. This is where internally now the body goes, okay, well, you know what, man, like, you're pushing me in a corner, I'm going to mold into a corner. It's like water. You put water in a cup, it matches the cup. You put in a cylinder, it matches the cylinder. When you push the body into a corner and you're saying, well, I'm just going to keep dumping food in you and I'm not going to do anything, the body goes, well, I got to store it. So if you look at the diagram here on the right, metabolic syndrome, as we spoke earlier, is the biggest killer in North America. It's a cluster of one of these three, abdominal obesity, and abdominal obesity does not mean you are 700 pounds. That simply means you're a female, you take the measuring tape, you wrap it on your waist, you're 35 inches or more. For a male, you're 40 inches or more. So if you're wearing jeans and your jeans are 40, boom. Not in a negative way, it's, it's an it's a, a indicator of too much visceral tissue in the gut. Now, if you're a genetically big, strong guy, you're six feet five, your shoulders are massive, these numbers will be a little bit skewed because you're a bigger person. High blood pressure, abdominal obesity, high blood sugar, okay, or insulin resistance, and high serum triglycerides, like plaque buildup in the blood. You don't need four now. They say you need three. When I first got into this and I started learning about metabolic syndrome 10 years ago, and I made it a big effort to help guys out. I was like, it's one of the four. Now it's one of three. So if you have one of three, you have metabolic syndrome. So this is going to cause disrupting patterns with hormone balances in your whole body from the brain. So, I mean, I mean, honestly, like most men have more than one there. Yes, bro. Yes, bro. So you're, if you're saying you have one of th like... If you have, no, sorry. If you have three, three of, of the those. four, yeah. It used to be you need four. It used okay. to be you so needed I'm, all I'm four. Just, I'm just thinking that if you are abdominally obese... obese yep. If you have high blood pressure... You, you would have high blood pressure. 100%. And then that means you'd either have high blood sugar... The triglycerides you, right away you would have. You would have that. The blood sugar, some guys are lucky and I tell them... So you're still getting three though. Because... Some guys and girls, they can eat whatever they want, but their pancreas is still fighting and producing Pumping insulin, it out. right? So they don't have that. But you have central obesity in the trunk of the body, which is the worst because where are all your bloody organs that work in your trunk of the body? Mm -hmm. So if you slide that up with body fat, it's not healthy. Coronary heart disease, that's basically not only uh, tissues of fat wrapping around the heart, so making it harder to, to beat, it's like right now we got three people in this room. If we brought in 25 people, we'd all be tight shoulder to shoulder. And if someone wanted to move, it's tight. That's high blood pressure. So again, can you tell, because I know you mentioned this on the previous shows, that count. You want to yeah, measure your heartbeat count. Yeah, to give good thing you, you remember. I, so yeah. if anyone's listening, put your hand down, okay? Palms facing up. Take your two index fingers. Put it on your wrist. Once you find that, bump, 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 bump. Get your cell phone out. You're going to click the timer. And you're going to go. You're going to count how many beats you get in 15 seconds. Whatever that number is, times it by four. So let's say the number was 25 or 20. That's going to be 100 or 80. Well, you know that the average heart rate is 70 beats per minute. So even if you're 10 beats extra, 10 beats extra times 60 minutes in an, in a, in an hour times 24 hours in a day, that's 14,400 beats extra. That's not happy. That's not good for your heart. And internally, your heart is building walls of plaque buildup. So when you go to the dentist and they clean out your teeth and you're like, holy crap, they just pulled out a bunch of yellow plaque. That's building in your heart. Physical inactivity is, I believe, the nucleus of all this shit. Because if you take three overweight men and you say one guy, just diet. One guy, take supplements, take pills, take whatever, whatever's out there, fat burners, you tell the other guy, bro, you're going to train three days a week, metabolic training. You're going to walk every morning for half an hour. The first guy who's training will destroy all of them. Because to burn body fat at that level requires an expenditure of calories, a thermogenic effect where your body's got to be hot, burning calories. And you literally, your body has to suck the fat and melt it internally for energy. So it's like you almost got to starve the person and feed them in a manner which is very tricky. So the body goes, well, I'm hungry, bro. I need food. Don't worry. Suck the fat. It's the morning. 
We're giving you eggs, tomatoes, and, and olives. Okay, so it'll keep doing that. Type 2 diabetes, I'm very, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not going to say I'm a pro app, but I'm extremely knowledgeable on because my wife's a type 1 diabetic um, and I've met so many type 2 diabetics and it pisses me off and I kind of want to tell them to their face, you got to smarten up. You're an adult. You got to type it's preventable. Of course, bro. It's of course. But you know what's funny? In today's society, you correct me if I'm wrong on that. It's almost normalizing. Of course, because they don't give a shit. It's like, oh, you know, my blood sugars are high. Fix that shit. Because my wife gave birth to a beautiful baby and she was super healthy before. No issues. She competed with my, making my foods and bodybuilding. She knows the realm. But then some women that are either ectomorphic, very petite, as they go through pregnancy, they go gestational, and then sometimes they keep it. Um, a lot of people who have autoimmune diseases, 80, I think it was 81% of people who have an autoimmune disease, thyroid, whatever, type 1 diabetes, no one in their family has it. It's just a fluke. Okay. 81%, right. especially type 1 diabetics. That's a huge amount. Yeah, man. Especially so. And then again, when you're type 2, you're basically, the, the person's basically saying, yeah, my blood... It's very slushy. Here's a bottle of water. Beautiful fluid motion. If I added some sugar in here and syrup, it'd be like ketchup and water. Yeah. And they're okay with that. And then you have aging. Not only are you aging in the fact of wrinkles, but you're aging on a cellular level. Your cells aren't getting enough oxygen. Your muscles aren't getting oxygen. Your bones aren't getting oxygen. So everything starts breaking down Boom, hence the fact you got metabolic syndrome. On the left-hand side, uh, you'll see the, the, the difference between metabolic syndrome and age at the bottom, and on the left, the prevalence of percentage in men and women. Look at it in the red. So when guys are 21 to 25, they're pretty close, 3.5% for male, 2.1% for female. When you're going into the um, 26 to 30, guys start creeping up. Look at 31 years old, boom, 8.3%. I'm 44, so I'm in the 41 to 45 range. That. So that means 17%. If you've got 100 guys my age, 17% have metabolic syndrome, which at 40, you can still cure it. Look at 50, 23%. Look at the women, still much lower. Because women, for some reason, I believe, have more of a tendency to pay attention to shit. When they're, when the, when they're getting a little soft, and they're getting a little round, they care more. They're emotional. They'll pay attention. Guys, don't give a shit. Especially if you're married. Oh, I'm married. I got three kids. Who cares? I got money. I got a car. I'm good. No, bro, because your body's your car. So from 50 to 60, that's the scary part. Because at 50 years old as a male and female, you should be enjoying your life. You're half a century old. You should be paying attention to your kids, the grandkids, enjoying life, not dealing with a clogged, clogged artery. And this is where they give up lifestyle comes in where you're like, you're 50. You're like, you know what? I'm already overweight. I got a big tummy. You know what? I'm 50. Where am I going to go changing it? This is the difference between real men. And the whole point of me changing my philosophy from training co-ed from the gym, which we're always going to train co-ed. But for me leaving and going to online training for men only is I have a mission and I want to make men be alpha men. I want to make men be Spartans, be the protector of their family, the provider, and the person that the kids can look up to. And when you're in your 50s and 60s and you're not healthy, your kids make fun of you. So that's that's a bad thing. Now, if you go to the next slide. So that's reality, right? That's now. reality, bro. Reality. The next slide shows you why. And watch the dumbest reason. Sweets, junk food, unhealthy drinks, and breasts. Like the stupidest things. If you would have told me not being good at math, not being good at, you know, uh, construction. Like I can't, like I can't assemble anything. If you want me to put a light in the house, I got to call an electrician. I can't even change a tire in my car. But if it was, that's the case, I would say, yeah. But when you're looking at lifestyle, like all you're doing is you're eating and not fucking moving. It makes me nervous. So metabolic syndrome is going to affect your heart, your lipid problems, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, cancer and dementia. Dementia has been very, very, very linked to metabolic syndrome. And the non-alcoholic fatty liver. So that is what I was talking about in the previous issue. And with women, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So that affects their, their ovaries and they can't have kids. Why? Because we're too overweight. Why? Because we're not moving. Well, damn it. Look in the mirror like our first episode we did and do something about it. Take action.
move forward. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. What does that mean? Is like you're, are you making your liver as... Yeah, bro. You're basically... Remember the, the previous slides that I did before I showed you the MILF explanation, yeah. MLF? Yeah. So I have clients that don't drink alcohol. They're like, nope, never drinks my religion. It's against religion. So their liver, because of the fact that they're consuming too much glucose, and it's not in general, it means at that moment, it means for breakfast you're smashing... Toast, eggs, and hash brown fries, and ketchup, and a double double. Like your body can't hold all that shit. So it's, if you're gonna have hash brown fries, have a half a cup of hash brown fries, have a massive omelet, have some tomato slices, and have a coffee black. So at least you're limiting the amount. So non alcoholic fatty liver disease means that every time you eat, you're spiking your blood sugar. Your pancreas goes, yo, I'm gonna help you out this time. I'm gonna pick up the glucose and I'm gonna move it out and divert it. The muscle's like, yo, I'm closed. Don't even come here. My shop's done. So here's the biggest problem I have is that this is all preventable. 100%. It's all of it. It's all based on health, diet, it. and Lifestyle. just mindset, right? And we're in the year 2022, bro. Like, we're at the top And the of majority our, of, of, our of men, I, I would say majority of men, not so much women, go to the physician and they just start prescribing all kinds of medications to, I guess, control this. Here's the problem, bro. Physicians, in one aspect, I'm not going to say this in a rude way, they are part of the problem. I agree. Because instead of sitting someone down saying, Manny, in scaring them a little, in a motivating way, scaring them, saying, listen, your blood pressure is high right now. 135 is high. Today, when I meet people, I'm like, yo, your blood pressure is 145. Oh, yeah, my doctor said it's, you know, it's a little high. I'm like, what do you mean, bro? 145 is very high. Your resting heart rate's 85. Oh, yeah, I'm on medication. I'm like, okay. And what did he say to you? Oh, no, no, I'm okay. I'm like, do you have any other issues? No. How's your liver? Oh, it's a little fatty. I go, are you diabetic yet? Oh, no, I'm borderline. I want to slap the person because here's the thing. Some people in this world, there's going to be wolves and sheep. And the wolves will, will make the sheep go into this certain area or the sheep herders, whatever you call them. And some people... They're just going to go through life. They're good people, but they need someone to tell them what to do. So when I come to you and you're a doctor, and you're like, oh, oh, man, you know what? You got to start training soon. You know, you got to start. You're a fool. You're an idiot. You should have your license revoked. What you should say is, hey, man, uh, if you want to come see me as a doctor again, the next time you come in, I want you to tell me what gym you're training at. I want to know if you've hired a trainer. I want to see the foods that you eat. I want you to take a picture of them and bring it to my next uh, so assessment. So why don't doctors prescribe exercise? Because they make, they make moolah from medicine. Big pharma. Yeah, bro. It's so much harder. Doctors may think they have a hard job. It's hard becoming a doctor, I feel. All those years of school. Once you become a doctor, you coast. A personal trainer, a coach, they take it in the ass because they don't have all that credentials i don't got the white jacket but then all the fluffs of the world come to see me and, and trainers around the world they bring all their mess and now we have to fix that and deal with the actual legwork the doctor says yeah go see a coach but we're in a society that the doctors will tell them take this drug sure blood pressure medication and it will do they say or is it do they say that it will fix you or it will reduce the numbers? You're like, your blood it'll, pressure will go it'll, down. It will calm the numbers and it will go down. To a reasonable, semi-safe. Sure. But, bro, if I'm, a, if I'm a pharmaceutical company and I'm a rep and I come to you and I'm like, hey, how much, how much are you prescribing? And they're like, I don't know, I have 15 clients. And next month it's 60. You're making a little bit of a bonus on the side. Of course you are. So that's, that's the problem. There's very rarely, you know, one of the doctors that come to our fitness studio, Dr. Saman Ragazzi, he's, he's oh, you got to see this guy. He's like, a little bit younger than me, fit as a fiddle, very built. Even my wife's doctor, Leanne Nakamura, like these guys are ripped. They look good. These are doctors. And his first thing is when I tell people about fitness, I'm like, what gym do you go to? Do you have a trainer? That's what you should go do first. And he doesn't want to prescribe pills. What ends up happening is people take the pills. They see the, the, the medication, the blood pressure drop. They get comfortable. And they've swallowed all those, all the slides we did in the previous ones about core identity, all that. They pushed it aside. And now they're like, this is me. It's my reality. So I'm going to buy a suit that's a little extra. You know, this is me. They and manage their life at that point. Well, they, they accept it, bro. Yeah. And that's when you, when you accept life the way it is, you're done. You're just on your path to done. Done. That's all and, it is. And then you, at that point, it's just an expiration date. And now watch the next slide, bro. 
So this is the thing now we're talking about hormones. Testosterone is it, when guys talking about what would a man love at 50 years old? Ugh. Every man, my 20 year old testosterone. Yeah. Man. Any man should say, I'd love to have the youth of my twenties mm -hmm. because to, I'm not a doctor, but testosterone is made in the adrenal glands and 95% in the testes. Okay. Your testicles, hypothalamus and brain detects the needs causes release of gonadropin releasing hormone sensed by the pituitary gland causes a release of the follicle stimulating hormone FSH and luteinizing hormone LH that flow down the testes through the bloodstream. So FSH kicks off sperm production and LH stimulates late egg cells in the testes to create more testosterone. I'm not talking science here, but just a rough little synopsis of how it's made through the conversion of cholesterol to testosterone. That's why low cholesterol diets are not good for men. We want to have some cholesterol in our diet. But after 30, testosterone drops 1% to 2% per year. That's mental. So from 30 to 50, you're going to drop 4 to, no, actually per year. So It's almost half. Yeah, man. I, I just messed up there. From 30 to 40, that's going to be 2 times 10. That's 20%. And then after 35, sarcopenia kicks in. For a female, they lose one pound per year. For a male, half a pound. For an obese, overweight male, I'm going to say the same as a woman at one pound per year. So the, the diagram shows at 18, we're full of testosterone. We get boners if we just look at a TV. Mm -hmm. 20 years old at our max. 20 to 30, big. That's the big peak for boys, and they get testosterone, you know, hype. For a male, <clears throat> bones stop growing at 21, Muscle maturity kicks in from 28 to 38. That's why when I was a young guy, I didn't really care that I was skinny in my 20s because I knew that I'm not even 28 yet. So when I'm 28 to 38, that's when it's going to kick in. So 40, you start noticing dropping. 50 years old, boom, it's half of your body. So from 50 to 70, you're done. So, so this is an average man. This is so this it, is average. This is statistically shown around the world. Like This is the stats. Yeah, but if, if you're talking about men that are... Overweight, more overweight. Oh, it drops even more if they are in increasingly stressful high cortisol production. Uh, personal life is stressful. No sleep. Those numbers drop even faster. Faster. Even faster. And then again, effects of testosterone, skin. Um, now, male balding pattern is also a, 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 a result of too much testosterone. Yeah. Okay. For the DH DH levels of the uh, scalp, liver synthesis, your male sex hormones. Your, your, the amount of even the size of your genitals has, and the next slide I show you will show the changes. Bone density, bone, bone marrow. Bone marrow, eh? Yeah, really. Man. Because you got to remember, think of testosterone. If you're, if you have high testosterone and you're active, you compound in the positive direction, which means I'm lifting weights, I'm getting stronger, I'm stressing my body. Well, when you place stress on anything, it either breaks it or makes it stronger. So if you've got a male who's 50 years old, he's training and he's lifting weights. His bones are going to be thicker. His kidneys will be stronger. There's better production of the kidneys. The muscle tissue, muscle volume, libido, brain. Now go to the next slide. And here's the nasty truth, man. So side effects, any guy listening today, I don't care where you're on the planet. I don't care what hardships you've been through. I don't care if you've had trauma from a child. Know that from 40 and on, man, this is your ability to change your life. So... Average testosterone levels are at the bottom page where it says age and then range. That's a 95% range. At 25 years old, 692 nanogram per deciliter. 25, still a little higher. 30, it drops. 40s, getting lower. 50s, even drops. Now, these are averages. I've met men that have 300, 200. No, yeah, really? Man. Yep, 100%. And when guys come into the studio and we meet them or online, um, there's one gentleman that I'm working with from the UK. And the minute he started with me, he was really, really overweight. I said, do me a favor. Thank you for starting. I appreciate your payment. Can you go get blood work? He's like, no, 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 no. I just want to start. Tell me what to do. I said, okay, get blood work first because I want to see as a proper coach where you are with your numbers. And then let's use it as a report card. So if your testosterone is shitty today, 60 days from now, 90 days from now, it's going to get better. So you can actually see the range. But one, reduce sexual function, desire, and performance. Sometimes leading to impotency, erectile dysfunction. This is from 35. That's 35 oh, years old. I've heard of like... That's yeah, crazy. Early 30 men That's crazy. having these problems that they should not be having. And a lot of times when I, with, when I meet with guys, it's very simple and plain. Men to men, they're like, bro, I can't get it up. 
I don't have sex with my wife. I can't see my, 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 my penis. Let's buy training. I'm like, okay, let's go. Women, it's different. So increased body fat. Testosterone re is related to basal metabolic rate. BMR is your basal metabolic rate. So the higher the testosterone, typically the higher muscle tissue you have, the higher muscle tissue you have, the higher BMR. The higher BMR, the less body fat you're going to have because your body is a hot engine. Pop belly signs are low T. So any guy who's in the bottom left-hand picture here, I don't care where you're from, who your father was, what you eat. I don't care if you eat raw meat every day and eat tigers for lunch. You're going to have low testosterone because visceral tissue is, is, is a sign of low testosterone, okay? Um, in Men's Health magazine, there was a study in New England researched a man's waistline is the single strongest predictor of low T levels. That's from New England Journal of Medicine. Decreased muscle mass and strength. Testosterone is the main muscle building hormone when it comes and when it drops lean mass. Uh, low bone density, we talked about very common are both related. Age-related testosterone deficiency is the most common factor in seniors. When they did studies on seniors and they're looking at their bone density, well, you look at their testosterone, it's low. Seniors with higher testosterone have stronger density. Bitch tits and abdominal obesity, low testosterone, increasing the female hormone estrogen. Males have estrogen, females have testosterone. Yeah. We have a little bit of both, but in different levels. High fat deposit in the nipple gland. When you see little boys, and when I was away on holidays, and I'm looking at little boys, and I'm seeing them so overweight, and almost like they have wrinkles, like some of those bulldogs that are really wrinkly, and I'm looking at these little boys, and their, their chest from chest down is full of wrinkles and like clusters of almost like cellulite. I'm like, what the hell are the parents doing? Why don't they not help the child? Because again, when a child goes from, from 10 to 15 and their high body fat percentage, their testosterone levels are not going to be like we saw before. So from puberty and on, it gets even worse. Um, low confidence, motivation, mood, that's the mental side of motivation of testosterone. Most common with low T, suffer from inactivity, poor self-esteem. You're not going to have guys walking around buffed, confident. Yeah, I can take on this when their testosterone's low. I'm sorry, it's not going to be that. Or else they're faking it and they're really good. High chances of infertility. Low T causes low sex drive, semen volume, genetical numbness. The genetical numbness is basically you're not able to get it up. And if you do get it up, you got no sensation. And shrinkage of the testicles. Yes, when men take testosterone-enhancing supplements, they take steroids, there's the myth of their penis gets smaller. No, their penis doesn't get smaller. Their testicles shrink. That's the thing. And then people think, oh my God, you have a small so penis. So the testicles shrinking is a fact. The penis getting smaller is a myth. Yeah, because the body's saying, hey, testosterone, hey, testicles, stop for a second. Manny's pumping me with testosterone and anything, sipinate, all these trypanates. So we don't need you no more. Let's use this foreign source. Got it. So now the foreign source takes over. The body says, okay, well. We don't need to produce anything. But then the body's like, well, what the fuck? We're supposed to. Well, yeah. This is wrong. So now there's a very tight balance. When guys do drugs, they got to have a very good doctor to balance their hormones because when the testosterone's high and you see them all looking huge and ripped, when they come off these drugs, their estrogen spikes up to the ceiling. And, and that's because the testosterone's dropping. They didn't cycle off properly. So men are stupid. Big time. And this is all happening right in front of their eyes. It didn't right creep up eyes. on them. It just happened. Oh, yeah. They've gotten the abdominal. They've uh, got the big, course. all that stuff. And Low all of a sudden, energy, I guess fatigue. their first thought is, I'll start taking roids. Or, or and I'm going to go for testosterone And I'm going to go get uh, Viagra. Or TRT. So, or TRT. And so yeah. all of a sudden, it starts, okay, these three things will solve my problems now. And I have guys in their 40s saying, oh, don't worry, bro. I'm going to go for TRT in a few years. I'm like, well, you're a fool. TRT won't work for you. If I take testosterone, the best type in the world, and I inject you, if you do nothing, you don't work out, you will maybe feel a little more energy, but you ain't going to build muscle. It's not a wonder drug. You need to train. So low T causes mood changes, <clears throat> can lead to cardiovascular disease and metabolic syndrome. syndrome. And now, where that comes from is if you have low testosterone, you're not going to have a heart attack, but low testosterone means you have higher estrogen, which means your body's more estrogenic which means you're eating shitty foods, you're not active, so boom, your heart gets clogged up and you got metabolic syndrome. <sighs> but eight out of 10 times, man, it's so funny. Like, think about it. I've been blessed to have a career that I can train people 
motivate them and tell them what to do to sculpt their bodies. And you, I still am left in a position, like think of my occupation. I still have the, 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 the board or the blockage where this bottle of water is my client. I'm telling them what to do. And if they don't listen, nothing changes. So it's like, I'm giving you all the, the resources, the knowledge, the nuggets, the tips, what to do, how to do it, when to do it. And then I fucking follow up with you and say, yo, why aren't you doing it? And then there's that. So the blockage has to go back to the core identity. Yeah. If you can't, can't fix that, you can't fix anything Your else. Your core beliefs. Core beliefs. What you talked on previous shows. Yeah. 100%. Now, so, I'm now, not a, a master when it comes to the female hormone, but I got a next slide here. And, you know, females, just like men, have estrogen. Okay. And estrogen is their testosterone. Estrogen is my wife's wonder drug, right? So estrogens are a group of hormones that play an important role in the normal sexual and reproductive development in women. Now, for men, the reproductive aspect of testosterone is producing quality sperm and enough sperm. For a woman, same stuff, in producing quality eggs. So there's also sex hormones. The ovaries make most estrogen hormones, although the adrenal glands and fat cells also make up amount of hormones. That's why fat is so important for our diets because it's a hormonal macronutrient. It, if, you, if someone doesn't eat quality fats in their diet, their hormones are off. Right? And then before we got started, I remember we actually, all, all three of us noticed that uh, women peak at 35 with their yep. estrogen level and men peak with their testosterone at 20. Yep. Which is fitting to what's going on with men and women, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of interesting. But I guess low estrogen symptoms, there's a bunch of uh, cause and effect too for women. But also women typically now, I think that the age of getting pregnant is from the 20 to 35 range. Because again, you look at a woman, after 35, it's considered kind of risky. Yes. Nowadays with technology, it's great. But back in the olden days, if you were 35, you consider <coughs> old to have kids. So that's why that's high. But then again, probably shifting, yeah. It's shifting. But look at the drop again. At 50, it almost goes to half of the body and drops down. That's scary, man. And then again, low estrogen symptoms in, in women. There's mental wellness. For for women, because they're so emotional, men are different. Like men can have a bad day, go home, watch the Raptors. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> women can go home, have a bad day, and that dwells and they it, it's it sticks with them. So from the mental wellness, anxiety, irritability, mood swings, crying spells, poor memory, brain fog, okay? Skin and hair problems, dry skin, hair loss, uh, purple or pink stretch marks, okay? Um, rough or dull hair, vaginal dryness. That's the first time I heard that one. Sleep and eyes, inability to sleep, broken sleep, insomnia. So it affects everything from digestive problems. To me, the most important one is the period of fertility because yeah. every woman wants to be able to, you know, one day have a family. So um, sc scanty periods, irregular periods, absent periods, inability to conceive, miscarriages, low sexual drive, infertility. Now, for me, if I had to say what's most important, I'd say, well, next to mental, it's going to be periods of fertility, then muscles and bones. Because I don't give a shit if someone can't have a family, next is muscle and bones. That's your, your, that's your vessel. And if your muscles That's are weak, mobility. yeah, man, if your right. skeleton and body becomes, you know, too morbidly obese or too much with the wrong hormones, you, you're not going to be mentally motivated to continue. And this is all preventable. 100%. 100%. Uh, I think I got one more slide here. Yeah. So testosterone function, I'm not an expert for anyone listening here in terms of estrogen, but I did some small research here. Um, it's almost the same. The lifestyle changes increase estrogen. Same with men, okay? Phytoestrogens, fruits, whole grains, legumes. We talked about carbs, right? That's exactly what I said. Fruits and whole... So fruits and legumes are going to be... Sorry, fruits and vegetables are going to be your fibrous carbs. Your whole grains and your legumes are going to be your starchier carbs. You want to have carbs. So people that say remove carbs from your diet, you're fools, Especially when they're oh, tricking. You need that energy. You need that, right? Estrogen promoting nutrients, vitamin C, A, E, and zinc. Zinc is also good for males with low testosterone as well. Moderate exercise, weight bearing. Now they say moderate. I think every woman should be strong, man. See, that goes back to the doctors where, you know, when you start asking or people start inquiring about what they should be doing, 
physicians or people that are professionals will say, sure, you need to be working out 30 minutes a day, five times a week. But you can't be doing, as you talked about on other shows, the same routine and your body gets used to it. You need to surprise, shock, change that Every routine. 30 days. Every, Every 30 days. Yeah, you need to excite your body to, so then it could be surprised and plus it could actually start to build and energize. It's and, not like uh, in the trades. To build a home, you need structure, foundation, support, beam. It's not like that. The body is such a beautiful specimen that it'll adapt. And then it says, well, ah, this doesn't really work I'm used no more. to this. You've been jogging every day at 6 a.m. for 45 minutes at the same speed, same music. So then you got to change. Instead of jogging, you do bodyweight squats, push-ups, dips, and lunges, and planks. And then your body goes, whoa, this is different. Now i got to adapt and get stronger. And that's why um, I can go sometimes two weeks and I'll train like crazy and I won't feel that much soreness. Then one day... I tweak something and I can't walk for three days. So the body constantly needs that. But it goes for men and women. Weight-bearing exercises is a must. Not maybe. Forget that moderate. At any age. Any age, must. Even more critical when you start getting into your older years, right? 100 from 30 bureaus up is a you must. You need to have some weight training going on to just keep your bone density strong. 100%. Keep your, your structure. The chain, the link that you talked about. You got it. Because right? again, we're all made of skeleton. We're not made of steel beams here. Um, 30 minutes a day of walking. So what that means is you've heard 10,000 steps a day. Yeah. So in my program, when you sign up and you're doing, especially with the online, cause I can't see you, I can go every day. I can look back and, and see your progress. And you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to put Manny to the test. I'm going to set up Manny on my program as of this week coming through. <laughs> and Manny's going to have the ability to tell you guys in the next 30, 60, 90 days, how he's feeling, but I'm going to be able to go on my app. And look at Manny's program and say, okay, he never checked that off. He never logged his food. He never took his pictures. He never did his food prep. So then if I do a call with Manny and say, hey, bro, what's up? We go back to the basics and fix the basics. So when we're looking at 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day comes from 10,000 steps. And typically, if someone can walk and move their ass 10,000 steps, it's equatable to half an hour of exercise of walking. So that's why the 10,000 step mark is a minimum. And when people are not losing weight and they're saying, oh, it's not working, I'm falling your dime, I'm falling this. I'm like, hold on, let's open up the app. I go to their client profile, I look at steps because if you have a Fitbit or Apple Watch, it uploads up to my app. 3,000, 6,000, 10,000, 9,000, 4,000, 3,000. And what the hell? You're not even hitting the app don't. The app don't lie. Right. That's why. So that's where that marker comes in. And then caffeine intake is also related to the hormonal effect because the more caffeine you have, especially at nighttime, you can't sleep. The more caffeine you have, one, it's going to make you kind of irritable and jitty, throwing your hormonal off. And then also, the more caffeine people are drinking, the more coffee, the more their body is dehydrated. So it's almost like all working together. And then you look at effects of testosterone for a woman and the roles of testosterone. So from the roles, enhancing libido, same as guys. Stimulating red blood cell creation, same as the guys. Where are red blood cells made? In the bloody bones, in the bone marrow. So think about it. You're not strength training. You're not lifting heavy weights. Your bones inside, which produce red blood cells. How are you going to get stronger as you get older? They're, weak, well, they're weakening. They're weakening. So they're not producing as much red blood cells. And you need to have a high amount, right? Promoting muscle development, same as a guy. Encouraging bone growth, same as a guy. Promoting reproductive health, same as a guy. So it all affects the skin, the bone. It all It's all same the same thing. Same thing. So your lack of focusing on your health and exercising and getting into a routine, body shocking, you know, pushing your body to a body certain, shocking. I yeah, like that. I mean, it's just like you're basically you're cooking up a storm that's eventually gonna happen to you. Yep. And or, the majority of people go to the doctor and give me a pill. But this they, they look for a quick fix, and we live in a quick fix society right now. I would rather an experiment. Anyone listening right here that's not happy with their health, overweight, whatever, I would rather they try this. They go to a personal trainer, or give me a call. I'm happy to help you out. And you try 60 days, just 60. Forget 90, because 60 days is a really good time to see changes. 60 days, hiring a coach. Sure, you're going to spend some money. It's an investment. Or you go to your doctor in Canada, it's free, and maybe that's the problem. In the U.S., you got to pay. You have to pay. And again, I have some U.S. clients, and they don't want to go to the doctor because they got to pay. So you go to a doctor or you go to a coach. 
you'll get way more results going to a coach because they specialize in this shit. Doctors know a lot. They'll be able to tell you a lot of stuff about your body. I, I strongly encourage anybody who's listening to take this on because we know for a fact that November and December, these next eight to 10 weeks are the fastest weeks of the year because as the holidays are approaching, yep. we're all excited and we start getting plans. So it's like Canada, we have Thanksgiving this weekend, Halloween's yep. next, yep. then the Americans have their Thanksgiving, and then we have the holidays. Have this Christmas. blink of an eye, it happens. So if you want, 10, be smart, pounds take the 60 days now. Yep. So if you, you tell yourself before Christmas, before the holidays, you will be in a healthier state of mind. 100%. And what's sad is, as a grown man, as a father, as a coach, I feel like I'm a leader to my team and my members. I look at people and I'll know within the first 60 seconds of a phone call, of an in-person interview, whether they're going to do it or not. And I'll, you I'll, can sense it. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. You feel my energy right now. Yeah. You know, when someone's pumped up and there's some people that just, I can tell they're like sheep where they want it, but they can't make that step. And then you tell them, here's the role. Like, here's my hand, bro. Well, grab my hand. I'm not really sure. And I, and I, and I, and the guy who. They're too afraid to try it. The two guys that failure. declined were supposed to come in. Today's Friday, right? Yeah. 8 a.m. They were supposed to see it. I hope they listen to this. I'm going to send it to them, actually. <laughs> they were supposed to come in at 8 a.m. to see Coach Nigel. And they said to me, I don't think we're going to do it. One guy's 72. One guy's 68. We're too old. And I'm like, bro, you have First a family. First of all, family, you're never too old. You have a business. You're 68. You have abdominal obesity beyond 50-inch waistline, bro. 50. Oh. So I'm like, why? I go, why wouldn't you just try it out? Regardless if it's an investment of a thousand, thirteen hundred, whatever. I go, why wouldn't you just try to show up and try? Didn't text me back. Didn't respond. Didn't even call me back to say, hey, I'm going to pay you for the two hours you spent with me. So to me, when I see this type of person, there's there's a certain level. I'm, I'm getting old now, and I, I cut the line. It's like if I'm going to try to help you, and I'm reaching, and I give you free time, free energy, and you don't want to take my help. Then too bad for There's you. There's only so much that you can There's do. There's only so much you right? can do. I, I want to shift gears to as much as you and I and a lot of people are not fans of Big Pharma and the medicinal way of doing things to fix things or correct things or whatever, I just also still find that there's been such a avalanche of all these natural path or natural this, natural that. You see it all over TikTok. You see it all over Instagram. You see it all over the web and social media like, take this, it will save your life. Take this, it will save your life. And it's all non-pharma stuff. But how much of it is, it just seems like this natural path noise. I like that. To me, it does. It's like you come along and, okay, eat 10 pounds of ginger today and you will live for another 200 years. It's like a lot of this shit is bullshit. And, and it's just people that have a lot of following and they're growing and they're convincing other people to try this and convincing other a, people a to try nice that. a nice piece of paper that states that they have a background in that. Now, here's a twofold of the sword. If someone has IBS, Crohn's, gut issues, severe acne, there's, there's abdominal, they can't digest food, they have their gallbladder removed. In that sense, I'm like, yeah. Go see this person because this person specialized in this internal. But when you're a normal mom and dad, Joe Frank, whatever you want to call them, and you want to move forward, all this shit that we just spoke about for the past three hours is the same shit, whether you live in Canada, Italy, Jamaica, anywhere. Move. Eat a little bit less, but eat clean. Move your body. Move your body. It's the first step. And I always use... Fitness first versus nutrition. A lot of people always say, well, it's diet first. No, it's not diet first because you can't develop the David Goggin, the mindset warrior, the, the Rocky Balboa attitude of waking up and training and doing cardio when you're just dieting. First of all, you're miserable all the time. You're eating less food. You feel like shit versus waking up and training, sweating, Salt dripping in your eyes. That builds you up to say, I'm not going to have the burger with fries because I just trained today. So movement's got to be first. But the problem with these naturopaths, and I have nothing against them, except when they try to paint this crystal ball that they have a different way of healing you. And I'm going to tell you a story. One of my clients, let's just call her Kathy. 
If she's listening, she'll know who she is. She was with us at the studio, got great results. Sorry, was with us maybe five, 10 years ago, got results. It's like a pattern. People come in, they get results. Their head either swells up and they fall off the ladder or they take their foot off the gas pedal, like anything in life, and they regress or they continue to exceed. She took her foot off the gas pedal, got busy, business, da, 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 left. Came back a decade later, started dropping 20 pounds in eight weeks, 25 pounds, feeling really well. Then her body plateaued. And this is where... How old is she? She's 40. Okay. 41. This is where people don't get the job of a coach, which is troubleshooting, damn it. If something happens right now, we got a troubleshooting expert right here with us. She'll help us out. So I kept saying, give me a food journal. Let me see where you're at. Let me see what's changed. What are you doing for your cardio? Are you logging this? None of that was happening. Results stayed stagnant. What did she do? Some girl came into my gym, was a, a natural, holistic, all this uh, natural path. Signed up in my studio. She signed up purposely to just take my clients. And I thought, you know, first two weeks, kind of nervous. You know, she's joining my gym. Will she take? Will she not? Next thing I know, I find out my client, let's call her Kathy, is down like a thousand bucks because she bought a nutrition program for her. And I go to her, okay, well, I'm not taking it offensively, but what happened? What did you get? Well, I she told me to stop eating dairy, stop eating grains, stop eating this, stop eating this. So all the pattern of all these specific people, they make you stop everything. They make you go through these bloody cleanses. So she had to drink fluids for three days, no real food, no dairy. She's Italian, by the way. So no cheese, no dairy, no bread. No, 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 no. She lost four pounds in a week. Gets people excited. And then after that, she put her on a diet that was so limited and restricted. And then said, oh, by the way, you got to buy the supplements that I'm selling you. You got to buy this thing and this so thing. It's no different than a, a, no a different doctor with pharma. pharma. Yeah. And, and again, if, if naturopaths and holistic nutritionists, anyone who studies nutrition, unless you're at the doctor level and you're dealing with patients in surgery or whatever, when you don't train yourself, don't talk to me, don't talk to my clients. It's like you telling you guys walk walk, about man. the trade yeah. who's never done this shit. You're like telling them what to do. It's like you don't walk the walk, don't talk. So I, I advise people strongly when you're looking for a naturopathic doctor or holistic nutritionist, let's say your kid's got really bad acne. Okay, first, start with training because training breaks down so much toxins in your body. If you eat clean and you train, you sweat a lot of the shit out. So a lot of kids and teenagers going through puberty are going to go through acne, but if you make them train, make them eat cleaner, and they're not eating a lot of sugar because sugar's going to stick in their pores, It'll help clean it out. If that doesn't work, then you look at other remedies. But don't run to these guys for the fountain of youth, which is going to come it doesn't in, a exist. in a container. It doesn't exist. Of pills. Or you got to buy this powder for the morning, this powder for snack, this these little cookie things that you buy frozen. But it's bullshit. It's not sustainable. No. And then what ends up happening is people go through the windshield effect. Windshield effect is... You're driving, you see something, you're not paying attention, you smack your face in the windshield. They try to lose weight, they go to one gym, it doesn't work. They try a diet, doesn't work, smack their face again. They try a coach, the coach was a loser, didn't work, boom. So after four or five attempts of the windshield effect, they're like, you know what, nothing's working, I'm just gonna stay this way. And I tell people- But they've exhausted all, well, financially, and I guess- Yeah, financially. Mentally, they've exhausted. They were given a, a serum- Yep. To say that, okay, so fine, I lost a few pounds. Anybody, we can breathe tomorrow and lose pounds. It's not Buddy, that if difficult. if I tell you to stop eating carbs you're, for six days, I don't. you're going to drop five of pounds course, of water. exactly. It's probably lean mass. Yeah. People are going to think, oh my God, I dropped water. And that's the hook. But it's the hard work. If I say to you, do me a favor, every morning go jogging for half an hour, and then let's weigh yourself. You're going to see the scale move. Tell me the results 30 days, 60 days from 100%. now. 100%. Then, then I'll consider talking to you further. It's compounded. Right. But I just find that in today's such, um, 
Everyone's physically concerned about what they look like. And this is just geared towards all the beautiful people, I guess, in their 20s and 30s. And these are the things that you should be doing because then you'll be beautiful in your 60s and 70s, which is total horseshit. Or even worse, when it comes to women, and this is the sad thing, is women will pay. Yeah. Because women are emotional. Yeah. And they pay to go get these detox treatments, these ice therapy treatments where they put an ice machine on you and it freezes and it sucks your body and then it's supposed to break down the fat cells within the tissue and all these cellulite creams and bullshit. You see them rubbing their legs with like, you put a cream on, I know. use a machine. I've it's s- like... <laughs> the bottom line is that just do the work. Yeah. That's and, it. And, and that's Today the you do 10 minutes. Tomorrow you do 15 minutes. You build up. The day after, and then before you know it, it's a year. 100%. And you've lost weight legitimately. The same way that you gained it, you lost it. You didn't lose it overnight. You can't lose it overnight. If you want to go surgery and have some liposuction, you want to go there. Another one. All kinds of crap. And it's just pay feed 20 it. grand to go get a tummy tuck. Yeah. And then they got to deal with the surgery. The but they're not. The okay. So for that argument, you're not sucking out all that visceral fat around these organs. You you're just sucking the abdominal. F- yeah. Right. But what's even worse is this. I can go in your body right now and suck out 10 pounds of tissue. Yeah. And then tell you, oh, wow. It didn't stimulate natural base, basal metabolic rate. Nothing. It didn't thicken your bones. It didn't increase the hypertrophy of your muscle tissue. It didn't give you the mental mindset of a fighter, of a, of a, of a, a military officer, nothing. So all I did was I worked on the aesthetic area. So now the person goes back to the same shitty lifestyle habits and they gain it back. Is it fair to say, Dimitri, there is a fountain of youth but it's, a, it's within you. Well, growth hormone is a different topic. and uh, That's what we all chat. Like everyone, you ask anybody at a certain age, all they care about is their youth. It doesn't right. matter how much money you have at a certain age. You can never recapture your youth. That's right. And everyone's always chasing their youth. The older we get, we continuously chase our youth. And we only care about our youth. We want that energy, that vibrant. But I'm just saying it's within you because you just need to do the exercise. You need to eat healthier. You need to be a better it's, person. It's God, God, the funny thing is God gave us all to us in a platter. It's an open platter. It's like a buffet. You want to work out? Go run. You don't got money for a gym? Push-ups and squats. Push-ups. You can, you can do that. You want to eat clean? You can eat clean on a budget. No problem. But the, the problem is, is people... It's not a problem. It's something that... Again, I'm going to look at it as God is doing this for me. He's giving me and other coaches in the world this problem to help us find a way to motivate these people because people are going to be people. You know which group is not peddling either pharma or natural path or this quick solution? You know which group isn't there? And I've never seen it. They've never done it. The elderly that's fit and fit. Oh, 100%. The ones that are active, the ones that are 80, 90 years know. old, and they're walking, and they're, they contri- and they're in a marathon, they're climbing mountains, they're being vibrant, they're being, you know, they're, they're healthy, they're eating, and they cook for themselves, they grow their own food. And they, my father in law, so that, that, that group doesn't peddle this shit. He won't None buy food out, first of all, he won't ever buy food out. And I tell him every time I go get my haircut, there's a, a Nino de Versa right next to us. I'm like, Pa, let's go for a nice panino. Let's mm. go for a nice porchetta sandwich. Mm. No, I'm okay. He's not into alcohol. He's not into taking medication the natural way. We have a client, Vula in my gym. She's, I think, 62 years old. She probably can outbeat a male in his 30s in terms of physical fitness, <laughs> strength, monkey bars, endurance. And this is someone in their 60s that's physically fit. Why, though? Because all their lives, all her life, she made it part of the routine. So... For me, training is part of the routine. Even today, I went in and I did a 25-minute workout, even though my dream is to do an hour, an hour and 10 minutes hard. But I had to be here, so I did a little bit of chest, a little bit of legs, a little bit of arms. I did some core, and I left. Just because I'm like, you know what? It's like brushing your teeth. I might as well just brush my teeth and then get out. Mm -hmm. Maybe a quick brush, but I'm going to get out. And people fear that it has to be perfect. It has to be the best routine. It has to be... so. One of my coaches, Vince, says, take imperfect action. It's the best line. Imperfect action. You don't know how to write good sales copy? Just write something, bro, and put it out and see what happens. 
You don't know how to cook. Make a bloody pasta meal. See if it tastes like shit. Go slow. Guarantee the second time it'll taste better. 100%. And, and, and we need that. So for anyone listening, the fountain of youth is going to be you moving your body, number one. Mm -hmm. Second one is going to be you having a mindset of relaxation and calm because you can take even someone like me that's super healthy, super active, 10% body fat, bodybuilder. You give me stress and it'll break me down because I'm human. It'll produce cortisol. So what can help with that is sleep. And people don't sleep well. Or if they go to sleep, they go to sleep right after they've been on social media for an they hour. They don't have healthy sleep. Comparison syndrome, stress. This person's richer than me. Look at their home. Look at their body. Then they go to bed and their body's stressing, subconsciously stressing. Versus putting down the bloody phone, reading, journaling. Every I, I, When I was in Italy, I bought this little booklet. And it's you know um, a gladiator, two gladiators in the front. And it says, made in Roma. And I bought it specifically to write down my gratitude every morning. And it's like a journal. So my wife opens it. My kids open it. Years from now, I keep making these. And if you open it up every day, you're going to see me saying something that I'm happy about in the morning. And then at nighttime, whatever made me more happy. And if I had a shitty day, I'm like, wow, yesterday I felt really sad, but I feel really good this morning because it's a brand new day and the sun is shining. I know it may sound blah, blah, and yin, yang, but if the, if the wiring of the brain is off, I don't care who you are, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, you're not going to work. You can't. You won't do the work. You won't do the work. You won't do it to the full capacity, or you can't do it long term. And that's the problem with burnouts. They, they cut out their carbs, they do these fad diets, they burn themselves out. And they think it's not for them. But I always tell people, death, taxes, and fitness are three things you can't avoid. <laughs> you have to pay your taxes somewhere or another, unless you send it to the Cayman Islands. <laughs> We're going to die in a box. Yes. And in Italy, they All bury of us. You. I like it in Italy because they bury you. Uh, well, I know for my wife's family, they bury you in, in, in the wall. Mausoleums. I don't know if it's like that in, in, in Portugal, but... They do it, yeah, they do it in Portugal. They do it here as well. Certain yeah. areas, and, and I love it because, you know, I, I want to be buried, and I, and I want to I wanna be buried in the ground because I know that I'm going to be decomposed and whatever, but um, I, I want to know that when it's my time to go, they're going to say, wow, this guy died at whatever, 80, 90, or 70, and he was always the fake guy. He was yeah. always able to run. Yeah. I don't want to say my 60s, man, I'm looking out the window that people, you know, surfing or, or doing stuff and I'm like, I can't do it. It's horrible. I want to be doing that. You're trapped in your body. And the challenge is no matter how motivating we are, even if I, if I took Tony Robbins and I dissected his brain and put it in my body, I could still speak the same language to people. People will need to, to move to the water to drink it. They see the water, they see the fountain you can't pull them towards they have they have to want to make the step forward and it hurts it's scary it's it's nerve-wracking being on a podcast is nerve-wracking so, so it's funny you bring that up because it, from where my family's from from the azores from the island of peak right there's a mountain there which is the highest point in all of portugal and i remember the first time i went back there and you got the water it, coming out of the mountain like all the time. no there, there's no there's a little bit of hot springs up there as well too right so you Love can it. go there uh but i mean when i first back went back there for the very first time it was like 20 years 23 years ago was the very first time i went back there and i came across a photograph of my mom's parents climbing the mountain in their 60s See? and that's something that i want to be doing because 60. even kids in their 20s and 30s are having a hard time climbing that mountain mm -hmm. and it's it's a four-hour climb it's two and a half hour climb down, but I want to be in my sixties. I want to be in my seventies. I want to be in my eighties climbing that mountain. Like that's how I really, I want to pull that off. So that's that. You're I agree. I agree with you, man. At that age, we shouldn't be thinking about which home am I going to be put in, what yeah, couch am I going to end up in. I don't want any. I, that's not the lifestyle that I want. So I we have to do people, it all now. But people don't dream. They don't dream big no more. They they settle. They don't. They're afraid. If you would have asked me. When I left Bally's and I resigned at Bally Total Fitness, uh, this was 2005. My wife was pregnant. I had no clue to do. I was starting an in-home personal training company with my Honda Accord. If you would have said to me, bro, you may not make it, I would have just put my fist right through your face. I would have walked through a bullet because my mindset was already made up. Like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So a lot of times people don't have good role models in their life. So if you grow up dysfunctional, like my family was very dysfunctional, 
I look to superstars, Arnold, Van Damme, athletes, Jordan, and I would read and watch and, and study them and every day and listen to them and hear them talk. And I never had the family upbringing of the mom and the dad and the happy brother. And it was a mess. So I, I lean to sports. I lean to comp competitive sports. I lean to winning for me was my therapy. Training hard, grinding was my ability to get rid of the stress. And then winning trophies was like, there's your gratitude. Because I, the only person I cared about winning for was myself. It wasn't. And that's I, been the last 30 years. Yeah, man. And I, 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 I would come home and I would bring my mom trophies after trophies after my, my pictures in my uh, Western Collegiate, my high school. It's still there. You know, rookie of the year. I did five sports in, in one year and the record was four. And I would come home and I'd be like, mom, look, I won this. And she was pure old school military. She's like, listen. I'm going to go to night school right now. <laughs> you got the laundry, mm -hmm. the food's ready. Yeah. You got to do the dusting. It's great that you won that, but you got to take care of this. Yeah, and I'm like, I couldn't, and I, I almost hated her for that. But then again, I thought to myself, bro, she did the best she could at her time. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have role models or people to look up to, we're doomed. So I tell people today, you have something in your pocket called a credit card. The credit card can buy you time. It can buy you a coach. It can buy you booklets. It can buy you videos. It can buy you equipment. You can pay it off slowly, but you can buy shit that you don't have to get the help you need. When you're too tight to spend money on your body, but you're going to have nails and your hair and Louis Vuitton purses or Jordans that cost $1,500. It's a young person's game at that point. Yeah, they, just, they love that shit. When you get older, that, none of that shit ha care. It doesn't matter. And it's, health, it's health is what matters. It's bad because even when I was in the U.S. this year, um, you know, me and my wife like to go to malls and stuff. And we went to a mall. We went into Gucci and Versace. We like to look around. And I'm looking at these young guys that are in their early 20s. They all do construction because I could hear them talking and they're spending like $600 on a Gucci t-shirt. And they're all pumped up to go out. I even took a picture because I made a post about it months ago. And they're all going to a party on a Sunday. And they're spending six, seven hundred bucks on a t-shirt. I'm looking at their bodies. And I'm thinking, fuck, bro. You, you can't even see yourself. Like you're buying a Gucci belt. and You can't even see the belt buckle. Mm. Your stomach's hanging over it. With that money, you can hire a trainer for like 10 sessions. But again, if you're hanging around people... That are into that, that's you don't give a shit. That's influencing you. If you're with someone like me, it's like, bro, what's growing on with you? You're gaining weight. Like, come on. Yeah, and someone will remind enough you. Is enough is enough. Exactly. Yeah. So we all got to remember, we're all going to age. We're all going to die. We're all going to get weaker. It's like inevitable. It's like our cars are going to break down. So why the hell aren't we all saying as of today, boom, that's it. I'm going to hire someone. I'm going to live a, a healthier. I'm going to live a healthier life. I'm going to try it for 30 days of my own. If it doesn't work, I'm paying the money. That's it. Pay the money, hire someone, get the results. Like, it, it makes sense. You pay, it's expensive, but then you get the result you want. You pay 2,000, 1,000, you lose 10, 15, 20 pounds. Okay, if you did it by yourself, it may take you three years to lose 10 pounds. Pay the $1,000, get the, get the invoice, pay it off in payments. In that period, you're gonna get the best results, change your lifestyle, and then you'll make five times more money. And one of my best clients, Tony Catrola, always taught me, it's okay to spend money and it's okay to go on risk because you can always work to make more money. And he goes, don't be worried, Dimitri. If you're during COVID, he's like, don't worry. You're losing money, don't worry. You're losing half your club, your staff, don't worry. You're 44, you can work and make more money. When you're not healthy, then you're fucked because when you're not healthy, you can't work extra hours. You can't do nothing. You're stuck in a chair, you're stuck in yes. a bed. You see young guys with canes. It's all preventable, man. Why are you in a cane for? Oh, my knee's bad. I tore it when I was playing soccer. So did you rehab it? Oh, it's bad. This past year, I've been telling myself that I'm 50. You're going to be 51 soon. And I've been telling myself I'm at midlife. Midlife crisis? I'm at midlife. I'm looking at my life like I've lived 50 and I got another 50 yet to go. I'm getting go. a motorcycle at 50. Are you? Yep. I told my Why wife. don't you get it now at 44? Because I probably will kill myself. I'll be <laughs> no, more you calm won't. and relaxed. If you get a bike in your 20s, that's most likely going to happen. But if you get a bike in your 40s, you, won't, you won't kill yourself. You'll be I a lot more get cautious. One of those chopper ones. I so, can't. Anyway, so we got to wrap it up. But I got one last question. for um, You've met Arnie. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. How was that? Because I even I totally forgot to ask you about that. I got last pictures time. in my office. It was the best, most humbling experience. Two thousand and three, um, he became uh, governor, and uh, I got a picture of. Yeah, him. when you were training, there's a picture of uh, of you and him. I'm trying to. Yeah, I know that. There it is, there right it there. Is. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, funny story. Right is there. We, we, that was him at the Arnold Classic. And that was with a Polaroid. They didn't, didn't allow you to bring cameras back in those days. Oh, really? Yeah. So picture this room. Arnold sitting here. There is uh, 25 security guards standing, and they only allowed 23 people in the room. So security 25 security guards for Arnold? Yeah. And then he needs 25 security guards. Yeah, because there's a <laughs> security guard holding your shoulder, one guy per each person. And they move you and they hold your shoulders. They move you and they hold your shoulders. Wow. So you can't pull nothing. You can't pull a knife or you can't pull a gun out. What? It's just one person. For Why would you want to pull a knife or a gun on Arnie? Oh, there's crazy people in there. Oh, wow. So the funny <laughs> thing, and I'll wrap this up in another two minutes, is they had tables with cloth separating the people going that way like in a U. Okay. And I waited. We sputted in line. We're up all night. I finally get to meet Arnold. And I'm like, holy shit, my, 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 my mentor. Yeah. And I go to shake his hand. And they're like, make sure you don't blink, guys. And I... Click, <laughs> and he's like, "Thank you. Have a nice day." And I'm like, "Okay, I'm going." I look. I'm like, "Shit, I'm fucking blinking." And they're like, "Come on!" And I'm like, "No, I'm going back, and I'm going to get another picture." And they're like, "There's no way. There's security guards." So what do I do? Because I'm a badass, I said, "What's it gonna hurt? Let me get booked. Let me get arrested." I go under the table. I hid and I crawled all the way down to the side. I went all the way to the front, and then when they were talking. I lifted the covers. I came out and he saw me and he looked at me weird. And I'm like, I had the pictures, my eyes closed. And when I went up to my, I just, I held it like this. And he looked at me. He's like, welcome again. <laughs> and then that's the picture with my eyes open. But I have two pictures. I have one with my eyes closed and one with my eyes open. At least he was nice enough to let you do it a second time. Oh, man. Man. But again, I had the balls to say, yeah. I'm going to go on the table yeah. and crawl. If I get booked, I get booked. And people need that kind of volia today. They need to have the ability to say, I'm going to go the route. Yeah, the balls, man. Doesn't work. It doesn't work. Just do it. Tell everybody again. So to get a hold of you, reach out to you. Yeah, watch man. These. If you live in the Vaughn community, you got to come try us out. Pure Motivation Fitness. We have a beautiful facility for men and women. 40 plus that are busy parents that want to lose weight. You can come meet us at that studio. If you are anywhere abroad around the world at Dimitri Giancoulos on Instagram and Facebook, uh, message me, mention Manny and we'll offer you a 15% discount sure. on our program. Sure. Uh, more importantly, I'd love to do a strategy call with you. I give people 15 minute of time your frames. Not, your experience, your knowledge, time. man, and, your and time. And people are like, why would you do that? Because I believe in karma where if I give... 10, 15 minute strategy sessions and 10 people don't get a program with me and five do, those 10 will say, wow, he wasn't pressuring me. He didn't give me an ultimatum. He was really cool. He taught me about my body type. He's telling me what I'm doing right and wrong. And he said, you can follow up whenever you want. They may tell 10 more people and then that's how I can. You genuinely that. care about people living a healthier life. Yeah, man. It's as simple it's a, as that, it's a man. Weird. Th God gave me a, a talent to motivate people, and until I die, I, I will. My wife says to she goes, "How do you do it? Like, how do you kind of wake up and want to do it?" And I'm like, I just keep hearing a voice in my head saying, "You know, you need to do your job, help people." You sure it's not Arnie? His it voice could in be. your head. <laughs> Come on, welcome again. <laughs> Get to the chopper, Dimitri. Thank you so much, man, for my all the pleasure. information you shared over these shows. We're gonna do some more of these. I've always had a, a great fondness of of hearing you and listening to you, and gets me all excited and gets back into the gym, man. So yeah, man, we're all I gonna really get you set up my program. No, man. I know we're gonna totally do it because I I'm like, I want to be a healthy hundred year old. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? Once and I turn ninety days, right like into the casket, I'm done. That's 10, it. Tapping pounds, out. Boom. <laughs> and Angelina, thank you so much for manning everything yes. here and handling everything so much going on today so again thank you so much everybody check out these shows and we'll see you on the next one man you got it peace